Now, what is what is Dr. Berg talking about now? Eggs and butter actually helping your cholesterol profile? How can that be? Now, of course, if you have familial hypercholesterolemia, which is a genetic problem, this does not apply to that sector of the population. Also, if you are what's called a hyper responder, this information doesn't apply. But for everyone else, I think it does apply. And uh, just hear me out. So let's first talk about the egg yolk. The egg yolk has one of the highest sources of cholesterol mobilizing nutrients. Number one, choline, okay? And number two, lecithin. Both of these compounds help you mobilize cholesterol out of the body. And the thing you need to know about eggs, for example, is that one egg gives you roughly about 186 milligrams of cholesterol, but you have to also realize that your body makes cholesterol. It makes a lot. It makes like 3,000 milligrams of cholesterol every single day. So if we look at 3,000 milligrams and 186 milligrams, um, there's a big difference between those two. And in that egg yolk, Mother Nature has provided the mobilizers of cholesterol. And I'm going to put a lot of data down below um, in studies, but dietary cholesterol, which means the amount of cholesterol that you're eating, uh, is not associated with increasing your cholesterol. And that's kind of a counterintuitive, but that's just a fact. Also, there is no study that shows that consuming eggs negatively affect your cardiovascular system. Yet in one study, which is a pretty interesting study, it was talking about the two phytonutrients in egg yolks, lutein and zeaxanthin, which happen to improve the cholesterol profile in the carbohydrate restrictive group. So they looked at people on a low carb diet and how their cholesterol was altered um, when eating eggs. They showed a lower oxidative cholesterol reading. They also showed higher levels of the type of LDL that doesn't create a problem in your arteries. And this is basically differentiating the two types of LDL and the particle size, okay? So you have the large buoyant LDL and you also have the small dense LDL. In the group that restricted their carbohydrates, there is a much better LDL profile that supports healthy arteries. And the other thing that I found interesting about the study, they talked about lutein, and zeaxanthin, those two phytonutrients are better absorbed in eggs than they are in plants, which made me wonder about what about all the phytonutrients in beef? Would that be better absorbed? Well, apparently there's not any studies done on that and I'll have to possibly do that study later on sometime. But the point is that animals you know, eat plants and they get these phytonutrients. And if we eat the animals, we indirectly get the benefits of some of these phytonutrients and the added benefit of just better absorption as well. The other interesting thing about egg yolks is that they're a good source of vitamin K2, which protects the heart. It keeps the calcium from building up in the arteries, okay? It drives the calcium into the bone. So as far as a food that supports your heart and your cholesterol, eggs are right at the top of the list. Now let's talk about butter, okay? Now I'm talking about butter from cows that are grass-fed, grass-finished. Not the typical grain-fed cow milk, but the grass-fed, which is a whole different thing. And if you can actually find butter that's cultured, that would be even better because now we're getting a product with an added benefit of good bacteria. First of all, butter and these microbes greatly have an influence over your cholesterol. Your own microbes make bile salts, which help to uh, mobilize cholesterol. Bile salts are involved in the primary uh, regulation of cholesterol from the liver and your microbiome make this secondary type of bile. But anytime you consume probiotics or foods with microbes, like the cultured butter, chances are you're gonna help your cholesterol profiles. But I just could not find any studies on cultured butter and cholesterol, but I do know the importance of, of consuming foods that are uh, fermented or enriched with microbes. Butter also is a good source of vitamin K2, which is great for the heart if it's grass fed. Vitamin K2 was called the X factor in Dr. Price's evaluation on 
traditional foods and fermented foods. Butter is also great for anyone going through menopause because it contains cholesterol that can really supply the raw material for making sex hormones. And I'm not just talking about estrogen and progesterone. I'm also talking about other hormones like progesterone, as well as cortisol, the key hormone that helps you with stress. If someone going through menopause is trying to go on a low fat diet, they're going to have a hard time with these hormones. And so just to remind you for the hundredth time, cholesterol is needed to make these hormones. Cholesterol is needed to make vitamin D. Cholesterol is needed to support all the cell membranes. Cholesterol is needed for your brain and cholesterol helps your immune system. Cholesterol is needed to make bile salts, which is very, very important. And so this is why your liver makes so much cholesterol. It's needed. I'm going to list down below uh, a study that was done. It was a randomized control study that showed that butter actually increased your LDL. And another study that shows there was a neutral effect or association between butter, cardiovascular disease, and butter and diabetes. I'll also include a link down below on the relationship between beta carotene and lowering your cholesterol. And if you're consuming butter from grass-fed cows, you're getting a lot of beta carotene. And you would see the color of butter being more yellow than white if it was loaded with beta carotene. But butter also has several other things that are very, very beneficial for your cholesterol profile. Uh, one is called CLA. And CLA has been known to decrease cholesterol, decrease inflammation, help you lose weight. And it stands for conjugated linoleic acid. The word conjugated just basically means combined with a protein. And then butter also has butyric acid or butyrate. And this is a small chain fatty acid that also has the potential to lower cholesterol. And it's used to help fuel the colon cells. So it's great to decrease inflammation in your colon. It's also been known to support leaky gut and it helps to prevent the absorption of cholesterol in your intestines which is interesting. Grass-fed butter also contains omega-3 fatty acids that can also have an effect on cholesterol. And there's some great research on ghee, which is clarified butter. They're removing the solids out of the milk and having just the pure butter fat and its effect on lowering cholesterol, which is also very interesting. Exercise can also help you lower cholesterol. And uh, if you're concerned about your cholesterol and um, you have high cholesterol and you want some additional things to do, I'm just going to rattle off a few things that you can start taking. Niacin can significantly lower cholesterol. Uh, natal kinase is another remedy that can help lower cholesterol. Red yeast extract is another remedy which can mimic statins. And my favorite, bile salts because bile salts can help regulate the, um, the mobilization of cholesterol from your liver. So in summary, I would not be worried about consuming eggs and butter uh, if you have problems with cholesterol, or if you're concerned about your heart, just make sure that you have quality eggs, okay? And you have quality butter. Now, since we're on this topic, if you have not seen this video on eggs, which got a lot of views, I think you wanna check it out. I put it up right here.